Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Good Effort Meg. Today, we are gonna do a quick little sewing project that you can hopefully get done in a few hours if you are, you have some experience sewing, um, or if you're a beginner, this is a great project that you could do over the weekend. It's small and it's a useful thing to make. So today we are gonna be making what's called a Japanese knot bag. And what makes these bags unique is they're asymmetrical. So instead of having two equal length handles, we're gonna have one handle that's longer than the others. And you can slip the long handle in through the short handle, which will allow you to close up the bag without a button or a zipper. Um, so it's really unique and it's really beautiful. So without further ado, let's get started. So for our materials, we're gonna need our pattern and some tape and some scissors. I will leave a link to the free pattern down below. You're going to need a lining fabric, which I'm just using leftover fabric from my pirate t-shirts and an exterior. So this is some fabric that my sister sent me from Japan. Um, fun fact, she is still currently living over there and she found this in a secondhand store and sent it my way. So I don't normally show this step in my videos, but considering this is such a simple shape, I decided to film this just to show y'all how I do um, the process. So when you see me picking up the uh, pattern piece, I'm actually holding it up to the light so I can line up those dots. Um, so that way when I cut this out, it will be all of one seam. And I just put those dots there just so it's easier to see through the layers of paper. But yeah, you just tape it all together like this. And then I kind of sure up those lines like so. And then you just cut it out. Make sure you're not using your fabric scissors for this part. Um, and yeah, so kind of like arts and crafts uh, from when you're a kid and yeah. So this is what it should look like when you're all said and done. And this is all the pattern pieces you're gonna need, which is awesome. Which is why I think it's a perfect beginner project. Now we're on to cutting our fabric pieces. So you're going to cut out two of each of your fabric. So we're gonna need two lining pieces and you're gonna need two of your um, showing pieces, I guess I'll call, and make sure you have kind of mirroring pieces. So here I've just folded my fabric in half, so I only have to cut once. Make sure with your exposed pieces of fabric that you really take the time to make sure you get it laid out. If there's a pattern, that's what you can see me doing here. This is as big of a piece as I have of this fabric, so it's not even folded in half. So I really had to get clever and creative with how I was gonna cut these pieces out. Um, but again, just making sure that you're really mindful of the way that you're laying your pattern piece out um, on top of your fabric to make sure you have two of the correct facing pieces. Um, so you can see I had to flip over the paper pattern and um, I couldn't get it to face where both of the pattern pieces would be upright, but I was willing to accept that. Also, you can see I nicked myself with the <laughs> rotary knife. So if you listen to my sewing video, you know I am kind of a klutz when it comes to sharp objects, <laughs> but cool band-aid and it glows in the dark. <laughs> Would recommend. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so here are my two pieces. So because the lining pieces are pretty hard to tell, I put an R for the right side of the fabric just to help you guys as the viewers. Um, but we are going to start with putting right sides together. So I just flip this up so its right side is upright and we will just turn the other one over on top of it like so. And then we are gonna, I just use clips, you can use pins, but I just put clips all the way around. And we are gonna do the same process with our um, exterior fabric. This one's a lot easier to see what is the right facing and the back facing fabric. 
Um, so again, we're just going to clip that all the way around or pin it. Easy peasy. And then using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on our sewing machine, we are going to stitch just on that bottom curve of the bag. And we're going to do this both uh, on the exterior fabric pieces and the lining. You can see where I stopped there, so we do not go up the handles yet. And then we are going to stitch just straight across the top of the handles, and we'll do that for both the short handle and the long handle. And we're going to do this again for both the lining and exterior fabric pieces. And I'm glad I have a black thread and light colored lining. Um, I think it'll make it easier for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see just where I'm starting and stopping um, the sewing. And again, just the top of those handles. And as always, whenever we are working on sewing a curved edge, we are going to snip the curves all the way around. And we are gonna do that for both pieces. Be sure not to clip through that stitch. Now we are going to take our lining piece and we are going to turn it right side out um, all the way, so including the handles. And I believe after this step I gave mine a good press just because the edges, yeah, I gave it a good press. Um, and I think that'll just help you, but yeah, and then we're going to tuck it inside of the exterior facing fabric. Um, take your time here. Make sure you get everything nice and lined up and tucked in there where there's no wrinkles or um, bunching or anything like that. So yeah, just take your time. You'll get it all nice and lined up. And on the handle pieces, just make sure you really focus on lining up those seams. Um, it'll make it look really, really clean. Also pressing those um, seams open rather than to one side or the other. You can see me doing that with my fingernail and you're just gonna be pinning all the way around. So up the handles, oh, here's a good shot, yeah. So here you can see me just pressing those seam, uh, seams open using my fingernails. So it's kind of a quick trick instead of using the iron. So do that both on your lining and exterior fabric and just pin it all the way around. Um, we're kind of focused mainly on the U shape in the center of the bag and making sure that you're not clipping all four layers together. You're, you know, again, we're making a bag, so don't accidentally close your bag up. And again, using that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, we are gonna stitch through um, just two layers at a time. Don't accidentally close your back up. Uh, but all the way around that, that center U shape. As we do with all curved edges, we are going to snip them all the way around on both sides. I'm not cutting through all four layers here. I know it can look like that, um, but I wouldn't recommend that because you might accidentally cut through that stitch. And now we are going to turn the entire bag right side out using one of the handle holes that's left. So you should have two openings that you can choose from. Um, but yeah, just turn everything right side out and then kind of try to tuck the lining into the bag. So this is essentially what your bag is going to look like at this point. And so we just have a few more stitches to do. Now in those remaining two holes, what we're going to do is we're going to fold the exterior fabric over um, roughly like a quarter of an inch or so. And we're going to do that for our lining pieces. And so what this is going to do is you're not going to see any exposed raw edges and do this for both handles. Um, 
I didn't take an exact measurement because honestly, I was just trying to get the handles straight. That's kind of what I was more concerned with. So do whatever makes you happy here, but you just don't want any exposed raw edges of your fabric. So before we get um, the bag all closed up, we're gonna add a top stitch to that U shape that we previously stitched on. So just quickly add that all the way around. Um, and this is just to make your bag look nice and uniform when we close up the holes on the handles. same kind of top stitch uh, seam allowance length that you used we're gonna close up the handles of the bag be sure not to stitch through all four layers uh, we want these handles to be open um, I'm not gonna lie the smaller of the two handles was quite tricky I think if I were gonna do this again, I would start at the seam, go down to the bottom of the opening and end my stitch there and then do the reverse on the other side um, rather than trying to stitch in a circle. Um, this was just really tricky trying to not accidentally close it up. Um, so I, that's the way I would probably attack it, um, uh, knowing what I know now, but take your time. You'll definitely get it. Um, one of the things that I decided to add there at the bottom was just kind of a reinforcement stitch. I recognize that that would probably be a weak area if there was one on the bag. So I just did a quick stitch and back stitch right there. So that's it, that's the bag. Here's a look at the way that the bag came out. And here's what it'll look like when it's nice and closed up. So I'm really happy with the way that this bag came out. Um, if I wasn't filming, I think the bag would have taken me maybe only an hour, maybe two, um, if I'm being careful. But it's super duper cute. I love it. And you just slide the little handle in like that and you can keep all sorts of things. I'm very appreciative to my sister for providing me this beautiful Japanese fabric. I love it so much and I'm just happy I was able to find a project that was small enough that I could get the maximum amount of use out of it. Um, but I'm definitely gonna hold on to the scraps for other projects. But my plan is to use this to hold uh, my yarn balls and some of my uh, supplies when I'm crocheting on the go. I usually carry around like a way bigger tote bag, but I kind of wanted something smaller to carry around with me. And if we stop somewhere, I can just have my things with me and crochet anywhere because that's me as a human. <laughs> But I hope this was informative and I hope this inspires you to give it a try. Maybe you've never heard of a Japanese knot bag before, um, but I think this would be a really cute project to do for presents um, or gifts for anybody. But it's small enough and a quick enough project that I think anybody could do this. And again, I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys give it a try. Yeah, so if you like this type of content, be sure to stick around and otherwise I will see you guys in the next video.